as far as moral degeneration and corruption is concerned, and taking only the US as a dominant example and model of a democratic state into consideration, a few indicators shall suffice as an illustration. <coughs> In the US, a code of federal regulations, that is, a document listing all government rules and regulations, did not exist at the beginning of the period that I'm looking at from 1918 on until 1937. By 1960, however, the Code of Federal Regulations had reached 22,877 pages, and by 2012, this code had swollen to a total of 174,545 pages. Subdivided into 50 titles, regulating in minutest detail everything imaginable, from agriculture and aeronautics to transportation, wildlife and fisheries. Whereas natural law is comprised of only three principles, namely self-ownership, original appropriation and contractual property transfer from a prior to a later owner, then today, after 100 years of democracy, no aspect of production and consumption is left free and unregulated. As well, at the beginning of the period considered here, no more than a handful of federal crimes existed concerning matters such as treason or the bribery of federal officials, while all normal crimes um, were defined and prosecuted by the individual states. By 1980, however, the number of federal crimes had already grown to about 3,000, and by 2007 it had reached 4,450, criminalizing not just ever more non-tortious actions and victimless crimes, but increasingly also motives, thoughts and speech. As a second indicator for the degree of corruption, it is revealing to contrast the total population number with the number of state dependents. Presently, and these are rough figures, Presently, the total population of the United States is about 320 million, or about 260 million if we subtract the number of people below age 18 and ineligible to vote. By contrast, the number of people wholly or mostly dependent for their livelihood on state funding includes the following. The number of state employees, all levels of government considered, is about 22 million. 46 million people receive food stamps in the United States. 66 million people are Social Security recipients. 8 million people receive unemployment insurance. Federal government spending alone on for-profit firms amounts to some $500 billion, which accounts, according to an estimate by Charles Murray, for about 22% of the American workforce, and that is roughly $36 million. And lastly, non-profit organizations and NGOs, which have an annual revenue of about $2 trillion and employ almost 12 million employees, receive about a third of their funding from government, accounting for about another 3 million dependents. All of this brings us to a total of state dependents of about 181 million people. That is, only 79 million people, or about one third of the adult US population of 260 million, there's a third of them, can be said to be financially wholly or largely independent of the state. Whereas close to 70% of the US adult population or 57% of the total population are to be counted as state dependents. 
Finally, as a third indicator of moral degeneration and corruption, a look at the top of the democratic state system is instructive. Namely, at the politicians and political parties who run and direct the democratic show. In this regard, whether we look at the US or any of its satellite states in Europe and all around the globe, the picture is equally unambiguous and clear and equally bleak. If measured by the standards of natural law and justice, all politicians of all parties and virtually without any exception are guilty, whether directly or indirectly, of murder, homicide, trespass, invasion, expropriation, theft, fraud, and the fencing of stolen goods on a massive and ongoing scale. And every new generation of politicians and parties appears to be worse and piles even more atrocities and perversions on top of the already existing mountain, such that one feels almost nostalgic about the past. They should. They should all be hung, rot in jail, or be forced and busy making compensation. <laughs> but instead, they parade around in public and bright daylight and proclaim themselves pompously, pretentiously, arrogantly, and self-righteously as saintly do-gooders, as good Samaritans, selfless public servants, benefactors, and saviors of mankind and human civilization. Assisted by a hired intelligentsia, they tell the public in endless loops and variations that, as in Alice's Wonderland, nothing is what it seems. I quote from that book, when I use a word, Humpty Dumpty said in a, rather conf in a rather a scornful tone, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is, said Alice, whether you can make words mean so many different things. The question is, said Humpty Dumpty, which is to be master, that's all. And it is politicians who are the masters and who stipulate that aggression, invasion, murder, and war are actually self-defense, whereas self-defense is aggression, invasion, murder, and war. Freedom is coercion, and coercion is freedom. Saving and investment are consumption, and consumption is saving and investment. Money is paper, and paper is money. Taxes are voluntary payments, and voluntarily paid prices are exploitative taxes. Contracts are no contracts, and no contracts are contracts. Expropriation is restitution, and restitution is expropriation. Indeed, what we can see, hear, or otherwise sense does not exist, and that which we cannot see, hear, or otherwise sense does. The normal is anormal, and the anormal is normal. Black is white, and white is black. Male is female, and female is male. Worse, the overwhelming majority of the public, far exceeding even the number of state dependents, falls for this nonsense. Politicians are not despised and ridiculed, but held in high esteem, applauded, admired, and even glorified by the masses. In their presence, and in particular in the presence of top people, most people show themselves awestruck, submissive, and servile. Indeed, even those opposing or denouncing one particular politician or party do so almost always only to propose or hail yet another different, but equally absurd and confusion, confused politician or party. And the intelligentsia, which finds its own verbal mumbo-jumbo echoed in the blabberings of this or that politician or political party virtually drools over them. And on the other hand, the number of those who still hold on to the principles of natural law and justice as a basis of all moral judgment, 
and who assess the contemporary world accordingly as some sort of absurdistan, that is, as an asi insane asylum run by crazed megalomaniacs, makes up no more today than a minuscule minority of the population, smaller in size even than the infamous 1% of the super rich of leftist fame but with little overlap with this 